How do you use a pivot table in Microsoft Excel to track your expenses exported from your online bank accounts? I'll show you how with this method, which is free and doesn't need you to share your private banking data and passwords with online apps based somewhere overseas. As you can see in this pivot table, it organizes all of your banking data into this simplified summary with subtotals and a total at the bottom, which I created and updated in seconds after it was set up. In this scenario, you can see straight away how much was saved, allowing this user to sleep sound at night. So how did I create a pivot table like this? I'll show you how easy it was right now. In the data tab of my expense tracker in Microsoft Excel, I have added a header to all items that have data underneath each column. Why add a heading in every cell? Well, it stops this error message from appearing, which I'll explain how to avoid this a little later in this video. So I'm going to create a heading for each column in row one by adding a row above my exported data from my bank. In column A, I'll call it date, column B, I'll call it description, then account name, and lastly, transaction value. Give it a name that makes sense to you and briefly describes what is in the column. I will also give my columns that contain formulas a name too, as these will be added to the pivot table. I will call this one left and this one category which will be very important as you'll soon see why. To create a pivot table, I'm going to create a new tab by using the plus button at the right hand corner and then change the name to summary by right clicking with the mouse button on the tab. I'm going to move this tab to the left hand side of all the tabs as it will become the most important tab very soon. Click on the cell A1 of this new summary tab. Then at the top of the Excel screen ribbon, click on the insert tab right here. And then in the tables group, here, click Pivot Table. It will then bring up a new dialog box and we're going to click on this part of the dialog box and then we'll go to our data tab and then we will select all the columns that have data like this right across, including all the rows below. You can just select all the rows with data in them right now. However, by selecting the entire range this way, we have also included all of this blank space underneath the data I've currently added so that any new data will be included in the range of the pivot table automatically. I'll select OK. We now have the beginning of a pivot table in our summary tab. But as you can see, it's currently got no data showing, which is OK, as we'll quickly change that. Once you click the pivot table section like this, it will bring up an extra two ribbons at the top of the Excel menu screen right here. Also on the side of the screen, an extra dialog box called a field list should appear. If this box doesn't appear, you can always click on this button here and it will appear. You can also deselect the field list by clicking on this button again, if you want to add more room on your screen. Okay, to populate the pivot table, I can add my categories column to the pivot table by inserting it into the rows quadrant, just here. You can see all my categories are now present on my screen. In my last video, I showed you how to add category names to your income and expenses automatically in Excel. If you want to create your own category column like this, then I've added a link in the description of my video below. I now want the categories to have values next to them. So I'll take the transaction value column and I'll add it into the values quadrant of the pivot table like this. By adding transaction value here, you will see the total dollar value of all the categories in the data tab summed together. However, you will see the transaction values look strange at first and the values are far too low to be correct which means there is a format issue we need to fix. When you add values to a pivot table, you will likely have this same format problem because the pivot table is showing this data in the count format, which actually tells you the number of rows with data instead of the actual value summed together within those cells. This is easy to fix though, by clicking on any value in the pivot table here, and then right click in the dialog box, then click value field settings. Then the value settings dialog box appears. Now we need to simply change the option here from count to sum and it will fix. While we have this dialog box open, let's update the number format too. Click number format and then go to number like this. I like to add separators to separate the thousands, which makes numbers a little bit easier to read on the screen. You can also reduce the number of decimal points if you prefer. The other thing I like to do is to show my negatives, which are my expenses in red font. This also means my positive numbers will be shown in black font which is my income sources. So now I can clearly differentiate any income from expenses in the pivot table. Click OK, then OK again, and you can clearly see the values in the pivot tables are showing the totals and subtotals of each category. Also, my number formats are showing too, 
with each number having separators in the form of commas, and the expenses are coloured in red font, with dashes in front, and they are easy to distinguish from income in black font. Now I like to see my expenses at the top of the pivot table, and if you'd like to move them around and change the order, you can then go to the bottom of the particular row or column you would like to move, and then while clicking on the left mouse button and holding it down, move it to the position in the pivot table like this, and then let go of the left mouse button to drop it in. Now I also like to see the highest expense to the lowest, so I'm going to move the highest amount, which for most people is going to be the rental living costs, or home loan repayments, followed usually by food and groceries, then bills, utilities, and so forth. Okay, looking at the data here, you can see that it provides a subtotal in this pivot table, and you can see that it automatically sums the values that you've got here. If the total is positive, then that is the amount you've saved from this data in this period of time. And if it's negative, well, that's money you've overspent. If you wanted to sum only some of the categories together, then you can simply click on the drop down menu here and deselect it like this, and that will recalculate the total that you saved or overspent. If you want to see more detail, if something doesn't look correct, then you can always drop in the description from the bank account data into the pivot table. If you drop it underneath the category in the section right here, it will appear underneath the category subtotal. By adding the description, however, this has expanded all fields out to show the description among the pivot table, which makes the pivot table very large and hard to review. If you wanted all the data to be just a summer again, you can go into the pivot table and then press the analyze button and then press collapse just like this. So that's much easier to look at. And if you wanted to drill down on a particular category only, you can click on the plus button right here. If you didn't want to see the detail anymore, then you can click on the minus button. One last important step, if you add more data or change a heading or add a category name, you need to remember to press the refresh button of the pivot table. If you don't do this, then your changes won't update in the pivot table and it will look like nothing has changed. To refresh pivot tables, right click on the mouse button anywhere on the pivot table and a menu will appear and press this refresh button here. Alternatively, you can also press this button right here too. Now remember this error message I showed at the beginning of the video? In all cases, this means you have tried to include a column in your pivot table that is missing a heading name at the top cell, which I demonstrated at the beginning of the video. To fix this error, all you need to do is close the message and go back to the data tab and either put a short heading in a cell that has no data in it, or delete the column entirely, or exclude the column from your pivot table range if possible and then try adding the pivot table again. Now click on this video on your screen to learn how to add more valuable content to your pivot tables to help you analyze variances between multiple months or years with multiple transaction accounts and credit card accounts quicker and for free.